Hello everyone, I'm Yvonne, a children's librarian here at the Manchester City Library, and welcome to Elementary Experiments Summer Reading Edition. Here we will do experiments and activities aimed at elementary grades 1 through 6 uh, with a focus on STEAM or Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, or Math. If you want to join us in person, uh, please visit our website to register. Um, this will guarantee that you get a craft kit for that week. Um, and also, if you are um, signed up for our summer reading program, um, going to elementary experiments will earn you um, the weekly badge for this week. Um, because our um, summer reading program is all together now, which we are doing along a camp theme. Um, so we are kind of earning scout badges for attending um, one of our programs each week. Um, elementary Experiments will um, earn you one of those badges um, for the week that it is um, running. Of course, you don't have to be in summer reading to enjoy Elementary Experiments. Um, and also, you don't even have to be in grades one through six to enjoy it online. Uh, so that's why I thought we would continue to post our activities and crafts here in a shortened version. Um, and these videos will be going up the same day um, that we do have the program in person, which is a little bit different than how we did it during the school year. Uh, so just be aware of that and double check um, our um, calendar if you do want to come in person. But also, I understand if you would rather continue here online. Now that that is all covered, let's get into this week's elementary experiments. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's elementary experiments um, where we are exploring nature and design. Um, for those of you in our summer reading program, um, we are kind of covering the topics of week three, which is um, Animal Investigator um, and our Animal Knowledge Badge, as well as week four, um, which is getting into gadgetry and kind of our engineering badge. Um, so um, that's a lot of fun stuff to cover this week. So I had a really fun time um, finding some um, activities and crafts for you. Um, so our first activity um, is definitely one of our more involved ones and um, maybe one that has um, some of our most unusual equipment. So for those of you watching at home, um, it might be a little bit harder to source, um, but I thought it was a great one for our um, summer reading program um, and our in-person um, having fun. So hopefully um, you can at least learn a little bit if you can't find all the sources. Um, and our second activity um, is also fun and um, I think a little bit easier to pull together. So um, our very first activity is to build an Archimedes screw. Some of you may have recognized the name of Archimedes, who was an ancient Greek um, a scientist. Um, so this method um, of moving um, water has been around for a really long time. Originally, it was used to pump water out of ships um, when you didn't have an electric pump or kind of um, the more complex system of kind of like a bellows pump or anything like that. Um, but I am getting carried away in my excitement. So I'm going to give you guys um, kind of the instructions um, and um, explanation, um, and then I will tell you about our second activity. In our second activity, we have our M&M Survival Challenge. Um, this is where um, all of us, all of us human people, will take the part of um, birds who are trying to make a delicious snack out of our insect M&Ms, um, which are just normal, plain um, M&Ms, don't worry about it. Um, and so we are going to um, be timed to try and grab um, specific colors of M&Ms. Um, however, um, there are also Skittles um, in our mix of M&Ms and the Skittles are in fact poisonous to our um, little M&M birds. Um, so this uh, activity is just to illustrate 
how um, some um, animals or insects um, can net use mimicry to make themselves look like other animals or insects that some predators um, avoid. Um, and remember, if everyone um, has washed their hands at home, um, then you can actually really enjoy some uh, sweet treats when you're done, if you have permission. Uh, don't blame me for spoiling your dinner. Uh, so definitely make sure that you have permission to um, eat your captured M&Ms. Um, but I'm going to throw up our um, um, specific directions and explanations before we get to our craft. I went ahead and grabbed our um, craft kit for this week, um, as well as sort of like some other things that we might need uh, to get this all done. Um, so um, our craft for this week is actually to uh, design a strong spider web. If you have our kit, um, you are going to find our instructions as well as um, some yarn. Uh, there should be about four yards in there. Um, and then our paper plates. Um, you will see that there is a hole cut out in the center and then holes punched around the outside. Um, this is going to allow us to weave our spider web. All right. So, what we're going to do is we are going to find the end of our yarn, which can be more difficult than one would think. All right. Okay. And what I like to do, um, because we are going to be threading it through a lot of holes, is to take some tape um, and we are just going to um, roll it around the very end of our yarn. So you get a little um, taped end. This acts kind of like the end of a shoelace or the aglet on the end of a shoelace, uh, which just makes it a lot easier um, to thread through our holes. Um, what else I have, I have, so I did have my tape. Um, I also have um, some, smallish heavy things. In this case, I have a bag of rocks. Um, and then I also have uh, these two bowls, which we are again going to use um, to hold up my web. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, weave a web, right? So we're going to use our yarn and we're going to uh, tie off or tape off one end. And then we're going to take the other end and we are going to start to weave our, um, our web. So before you start just going off and weaving, um, you might want to stop a minute and think about how you want your um, threads of your web to overlap um, because we are going to test the strength of our finished web um, by placing our small heavy objects on it. So in my case, our rocks. So I'm going to use um, these bowls um, to make kind of like a bridge. So when it's finished, we're gonna make a bridge with our web and we're going to put our rocks onto the surface of our web um, and see how many we can get it to hold. Uh, this can be pretty tricky. Um, and that's why you might want to think about how you're going to have your threads of your web cross um, as you're making it. Uh, so let's just get started. Here is my um, web. Here is the end. So on this, I um, can either tie or tape off this final end. 
Uh, so actually, uh, different spiders will actually weave their webs differently depending on um, what uh, they do, how they hunt, that kind of thing. Um, it's definitely something that if you are not scared of spiders, you might want to um, look up um, afterwards because it is very interesting. Um, but because I knew that our spider web was meant to hold um, like my small rocks, I definitely tried to make it so that it had a lot of um, crisscrossing and a lot of reinforcement, right? So that um, if I put a rock in a place, it would be supported by several different directions, right? Um, and a couple different spots that hopefully that will work on. So we are going to see if my engineering of the spider web um, is any good. So if you have um, a friend or a family member, um, it can be nice to um, have them hold it um, while you place the rocks. Um, but since it's just me, I'm going to try and balance it on here. Oop, I might actually just tape it in place. I'm just going to tape my plate to these bowls because they're a little bit slippery and I don't have any, any extra hands to help me at the moment. Okay. All right. Now we are going to test our web. Okay, okay, that gives you guys a better view of the spider web. Okay, so uh, we're going to take our small heavy rocket objects and we are going to see if my spider web can hold them and how many. All right, so I'm gonna put them carefully. All right, I think this is it. This is definitely going to take a little bit of careful placement because um, if you saw with the first one, it did sort of slip through the first couple layers of web uh, before it was held um, until I put the second one on. So it's definitely going to be um, a bit of a balancing act. Okay, let's see. All right, and so I'm not I'm not putting them on the edge of the plate. This one's very close, but it's still in the inner circle. Um, so I think that makes it fair game. Um, especially if you are doing this uh, with friends and, or family and they have their own spider webs and um, you guys are making this like a challenge, you definitely want to make sure that you have uh, some of those rules like can you put it on the edge of the plate? Oh, oh and that one fell. Let me try and re, re jigger. Okay, so I'm up to three. Oh, four. Oh, like three and a half. Okay, okay. Let's see if I can get five to stay on all at once. I'm not sure. Okay, that is five rocks, which is not bad. Um, so I think I'm going to leave my spider web here. Um, I think it's doing a pretty good job. Um, so um, can you guys beat me? Can you get more than five of your smallish heavy items onto your spider web? That's kind of a lot. If you can't, it's totally fine. Um, but I don't know. I think that's um, a fun goal to sort of aim for, if you can. Um, also remember that if um, you try out your spider web design and it's really not working, um, you can um, carefully like untape the end and kind of um, take out the yarn. It might take a little while, but you can definitely redesign your spider web. I think that's important to know um, about engineering. Um, and honestly, most types of science and even art is that sometimes your first design does not work. And that's okay because we still learn things from it um, and you can always try again. Um, you know, even if your paper plate rips, um, you can definitely um, ask and see if it's possible to um, even get another one at home um, or to get some help taping it up. There is usually um, a solution um, if we um, try and think it through and ask for help when we need it. All right, and that is the end of this week's um, elementary experiments, nature and design. I hope that you guys 
um, had some fun and learned a few things. Um, I will remind everyone to keep on um, registering your um, reading minutes if you are doing our summer reading program. Um, and to remind everyone that our in-person um, elementary experiments will help you earn um, that week's um, badge for our uh, summer reading where we are doing um, all together now in our camp theme and earning badges as we go. Um, so next um, elementary experiment will be um, in two weeks um, where we are going to be exploring sound and water. Um, so um, just to remind everyone that is going to be on July 25th where we are going to be kind of combining our um, week five fireside tales and week six uh, fishing for knowledge. Um, and we are going to be um, kind of talking about um, water filtration a little bit, um, as well as um, sound vibrations, um, which we have covered before in elementary experiments, but it's always super fun. Um, and usually makes um, somewhat noisy things uh, that hopefully all of the adults will not blame me for too much and you guys will enjoy. Um, so um, that is going to be next week's. Um, if you think that is interesting, uh, please register um, online for our in-person if you are in the Manchester um, City area. Um, and you are in grades one through six. Otherwise, please join us back here um, on that same day, July 25th, because we are still posting our videos at the same time as our in-person um, elementary experiments. And we will continue that through the rest of the summer. As normal, I will put up our book recommendations um, sort, of, sort of on this topic. I think we are done here. Uh, until next time. Bye, guys.